Joining us on the Mind Your Body show today, we have a very, very special guest and one that I've had the pleasure of interviewing once before, Dr. Josh Axe. So Dr. Josh Axe is the founder of the world's number one most visited natural health website, draxe.com. He's also the best-selling author of The Collagen Diet, Keto Diet Cookbook, Eat Dirt and Keto Diet, and most recently, Ancient Remedies, which we're going to be talking about today. He is also the co-founder of the Agent Nutrition Supplement Company, and Dr. Axe appears regularly on The Dr. Oz Show and has written for Shape, Pop Sugar, Huff Post, Men's Health, Well and Good, Muscle and Fitness, Hers, and many, many others. He is also the host of The Dr. Axe Show. So welcome to the Mind Your Body Show, Dr. Axe. Hey, Trudy. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here and excited to uh, talk again. Yes, me as well. So Dr. Axe, you need no introduction, but can you tell us a little bit about your background and what you're up to in the world? Yeah, sure. So I, um, yeah, I, I today run Ancient Nutrition. It's a vitamin supplement company and also really focus on educating people on how to use food as medicine. So I started a natural website, as you mentioned, draxe.com. So I spend time writing articles, uh, creating content to really help people heal naturally. And, you know, a big part of what got me into the natural health space in the first place was a health crisis in my family. And so I, um, that's really what led me to, uh, create the products I've created. It's what led me to, uh, you know, do the interviews I do just create the content I do because I, my family growing up did not, we did not know about natural health. We had no idea that it made a difference whether you eat, ate French fries or blueberries. Like we just did not know the importance of nutrition. And then now that I know, like knowing what I know now uh, actually helped heal my mom of a life-threatening illness. And so for, for me, that's really what led me to start the companies I've started is I just, I want people to be healthy using natural, you know, natural superfoods and food and herbs and those sort of things. And the results I've seen, I think are much better than conventional medicine today because you're not having those side effects. It's better long-term. And so today I run and operate these companies and, um, you know, just helping people get healthy naturally. Awesome. So we talked about this a little bit before we hit record, but I want to talk about your latest book, Ancient Remedies, because I have a feeling that this is going to completely change the game as all of your books do. And as someone who is a culinary nutritionist, using foods to both prevent and treat illness, I am just super excited about this book and how it's going to help people. So can you tell us a little bit more about it? Yeah, absolutely. So the book is Ancient Remedies, and it really dives into uh, how to overcome over 70 different health conditions. And so if somebody's suffering with hypothyroidism, PCOS, low testosterone, autoimmune disease, chronic pain, um, almost migraine headaches, you know, almost anything you can imagine, I go through how to heal it, food sensitivities. And I do it going through ancient forms of medicine. So I go through traditional Chinese medicine, Ayurveda, Greek medicine from Hippocrates, and how what they're way of getting to the root cause of disease was to heal a condition. So I'll give you an example of this, Trudy. So today, when somebody goes into their doctor with, I'm just going to use hypothyroidism as an example, the doctor will say, hey, here is a prescription medication like Synthroid, and you're going to have to be on this the rest of your life. That's literally all they do today. I mean, 90 plus percent of doctors. But in the ancient world, they knew Hippocrates and Maimonides and these ancient physicians, they knew that the actual cause of hypothyroidism was known as a qi and yang deficiency. Now, those words might sound weird, but here's what it is. Qi is essentially your body's dream, uh, adrenals, okay? It's your, imagine your body has a battery because it does, kind of like on your, your phone, right? Your cellular phone. You know, what are you at right now? You're at 80%, 60%, 20%. That matters. If you have a really good adrenal battery to where you haven't been pumping out all these stress hormones, then you have more energy to give to the rest of your organs to function properly. So all that being said, if your battery is low, that's part of what causes hypothyroidism. The other part is what's called a yang deficiency, which means you probably have too much estrogen and, and more of those hormones and not enough progesterone and testosterone and some of those hormones. So what it is, it's a hormone imbalance of, of two organ systems, of your adrenals uh, primarily, but also your reproductive organs. And that's what's affecting the thyroid. So people think, oh, hypothyroidism, that's a thyroid issue. It's really not. Those thyroid hormones are off 
because your adrenal hormones are off and some of those reproductive hormones like estrogen and testosterone. So what they did is they said, well, what's the root cause of that? Well, they found that certain foods help boost your adrenals and help balance those hormones. So it's going to be foods like dark colored berries, blueberries and blackberries, even things like rice that supports those adrenals. The other foods good for hormones are going to be like avocado and coconut and wild caught salmon. And so they would prescribe a diet of food using food as medicine and, and actually prescribing meals for their medicine. They say, Hey, here are the meals that are going to help heal you. They would then say, Hey, let's also do some herbs to help heal you. Like the chief herb in Ayurveda to heal hypothyroidism was ashwagandha. Okay. So that doctor would maybe prescribe ashwagandha. And then they would say, the other big thing is, Hey, we got to reduce stress, right? That's part of why these adrenals are overactive. So I'm going to prescribe you to start doing yoga or taking long walks outside first thing in the morning. And that's what these ancient practitioners would do is they say, you have this condition, here are the exact foods, the exact herbals and the exact lifestyle thing to heal. And here's what happens. Hypothyroidism will reverse and completely heal in almost every case I've ever cared for where the person followed through. Wow. But today, doctors are only prescribing drugs to cover up symptoms, not get to the root cause of healing the condition. So in my book, Ancient Remedies, that's what I'm doing is I'm going through all these different conditions. I'm going through these healing principles of how to heal the root cause of all these diseases. Oh, that's amazing, Dr. Axe. And you're definitely speaking my language because I had a bit of an opposite upbringing in my world. My mom is Jamaican, my grandparents are Jamaican, and we always turn to foods for healing. And I didn't even really understand it at that time growing up, but it was always turning to foods and turning to herbs. And actually, that's really what inspired me to become a culinary nutritionist and use foods to help prevent disease, you know, to pre prevent disease as well as treat disease. And I see that with my clients as well. Like some of my clients who have autoimmune conditions, like the first thing they'll put them on is like prednisone or Celsept um, and all these different medications before stopping to consider what we're putting on our plate, ways to reduce inflammation, looking at different factors like stress um, and all these different things that they don't even consider. They just want to throw medications at it. So I'm so glad that you're talking about this. Yeah, Trudy, one of the other things that I just think people need to be more aware of when people watch, I mean, I, I would be interested to hear how many people agree with me on, on this. When you watch a commercial on television about a drug advertisement, they are saying things like, but, but I don't think people hear it anymore. May cause you to, you know, have liver issues, can increase your risk of cancer, weakened your immune system. All of these things are these side effects. And yet people still take them. If you, here's the thing that people don't realize about medications as well, though. They all leach nutrients from their body. There is not, there's not a single medication, everything from an aspirin to a chemotherapy drug. They all have a side effect and deplete your body of nutrients. So you mentioned prednisone, what that does, it actually weakens your bones. It pulls calcium, magnesium, and vitamin D and phosphorus actually out of your bones and weakens your bone structure and your ligaments and tendons. So now if you take prednisone, your chance of getting arthritis or any inflammatory illness or autoimmune disease goes up dramatically. So just know, hey, you can take that and it might dampen your pain for four weeks, but now it's affecting your body for the next 40 years and the damage it's done in pulling and leaching all those nutrients from the body. Birth control. There's another example, birth control pills pull actually kill off uh, kill off probiotics. And they also deplete your body of B vitamins and other nutrients as well. I mean, antibiotics obviously kill things. We're talking about metformin pulls coenzyme Q10 out of your body. So now it increases your risk of dying of a heart attack. So all that being said, I don't need to get any more there, but I just wanted to say, this is why food is so powerful is it doesn't have, the only side effect is you're going to be healed. That's right. the side effect of using food as medicine versus drugs. There are side effects and it never actually gets to the root of the problem. Oh, I love that. So Dr. X, I want to go back to, you know, the origins, because in your book, you talk about the pivotal moment that ancient remedies was born. And that was when you shared the story about your mom and her second bout of cancer. So yeah. can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, growing up, as I mentioned, my family knew nothing about nutrition, but we did know about fitness. So my family growing up, my mom was my gym teacher in elementary school. She was a swim instructor. Uh, my dad was a weightlifter and semi-pro water skier. So like we were into fitness and at 40, you would have looked at my mom and you would have thought, man, that, you know, she's a fit woman. 
but she was diagnosed with cancer at 40. And we lived in what I'll call the medical model. Anytime we were sick, the first thing we did is we went and got put on drugs. We just did whatever our conventional doctor told us. And her doctor said, you need to go in and do have a mastectomy and start doing chemotherapy. So my mom did it. She had a mastectomy. She went through rounds and rounds and rounds of chemotherapy. And I can still remember this day, seeing her hair fall out. I remember looking at her and thinking she had aged 20 years in two weeks and saying to myself, I never want to see anyone go through that again. And praise God, she was eventually diagnosed as being cancer-free and healthy. Here's the crazy thing, though. My mom seemed like she had more health problems and was sicker after the treatments than she was before. She got put on antidepressant drugs, anti-anxiety drugs, thyroid medication. She was diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome, had chronic digestive issues like leaky gut and constipation. My mom was very, very sick through my entire, you know, my, my entire time growing up. And when I was about a year away from graduating, opening up my functional medicine clinic, which I don't run anymore, but I did, I operated a functional medicine clinic for many years, but I was about to open up my own clinic and I got a call from my mom and she says, in tears, I've got bad news. I've just been diagnosed with cancer on my lungs. What do I do? And I said, mom, I'll be home. I flew from Florida where I was in school back to Ohio where I grew up. And the first thing we did is we sat down, we prayed together. We felt led to take care of her all naturally. And I'd been very fortunate at the time to have some amazing mentors who were in integrative and functional medicine who knew these principles. And I'd been learning them from them as well. But I talked to them. I also started doing thousands of hours of research. And when I say thousands, I mean it. I mean, I was reading about ancient remedies for cancer, uh, you know, different diets, all these things. And I stumbled across some amazing things. I started, as I was studying like Chinese medicine, I started reading about the cancer fighting properties of of mushrooms, like reishi mushroom. I started reading on the uh, amazing benefits of turmeric. I started reading studies on vitamin D and I started reading about certain essential oils like frankincense. And so I took all of these things together and I said, mom, we're gonna go at this thing holistically. We're gonna change your diet. We're gonna have you take supplements. I'm gonna have you start doing things you love to do. Like we're gonna work on your mindset and healing your emotions. We're gonna do it all. And so her diet looked like she was doing, juicing some vegetables, uh, mostly green vegetables and some carrots and beets. We had her drinking bone broth. We had her doing mostly, I mean, a lot of steamed and raw vegetables, both a little bit of wild organic meat, like wild salmon, some coconut oil, but that was her diet. I mean, really what I just shared, those are most of the foods. And then from a supplement standpoint, we had her start doing reishi and turmeric and spirulina and some other really powerful things. And then the other big thing was mindset. My mom had a lot of fear and worry in her life. What people don't know, because a lot of people don't know, but according to all these ancient forms of medicine, different emotions cause different diseases in the body. So the emotion of fear causes disease of your reproductive organs and your adrenals and your hormonal system, essentially. That's what fear does. Whereas worry affects your digestive system. And we, you know, think about this. We know this is true. If somebody gets an upset stomach, they'll say, oh, or is nervous. They'll be like, my stomach is tied in knots. Right. Well, because worry affects your digestive system. If a child gets really scared at night or has a bad nightmare because they were afraid, they can wet the bed. Mm -hmm. fear affects your kidneys, adrenals, reproductive organs. So we know emotions affect organs. Those were the big emotions she was experiencing or two of, and then also grief. My mom had some things happen to her in the past where people, you know, told her she wasn't good enough, a lot of negative things, and she was holding on to those things. So we went through an exercise of essentially um, forgiving people in the past. I had her get out an audio recorder and tape herself saying Bible verses and also having her speak her future. So she would say, Hey, I can see myself. I'm in my eighties. I'm bringing my grandkids. They're two and four years old, the Disney world. Hey, I'm water skiing at 80, like all this stuff. She said this stuff. She, she, she quoted that in Bible verses and her self healing. This is like a five or 10 minute tape. She would listen to it every morning when she woke up every night before bed and just started reading positive. Also. So, so anyways, we had her start reducing stress and doing that. We had her start eating this way. We went back to her oncologist after four months and her oncologist read it a CT scan. And we got a call the next day and her oncologist, her exact words were, this is highly unusual. We don't typically see this, but your tumors have shrunk by more than half. She said, I want to, I want to see you again in nine months. Uh, but, but she said, but keep doing what you're doing. She went back nine months later, almost complete remission. And today it's been probably about 15 years since then. 
and my mom is in the best shape of her life. My mom's now in her uh, late sixties, uh, about 67, 68, and just has incredible health. She said she feels better now in her sixties and her thirties. And I'll say this two months ago, she brought my niece and nephew who are three and five years old to Disney world and was there like 12 hours. And so, and first off, I don't even know if I could do that. You know, emotionally, I, I know I couldn't physically, maybe, but all that being said, like, so she has great health and it was following these principles, you know, that I talk about in ancient remedies and it's, um, so anyways, that's a big part of even what brought me into the field of, uh, of, of natural medicine. Wow. That is such an incredible story. And I'm sure that it's super inspiring to a lot of people that are listening to this who might be going through a cancer diagnosis right now. So thank you so much for sharing that story. It's absolutely incredible. So, yeah. Well, Hey, thanks for, uh, thanks for asking about it and having me on. Oh yeah. That was one of the most powerful pieces in your book for sure. Yeah. Um, so many good things in the book I want to talk about, but you had this amazing social media post and you also talk about this in your book as well, um, about the theory that like supports like, and that our ancestors said that foods that look like a certain body part are actually beneficial for that body part. So can you talk a little bit about what some of those foods are and, and the links to those different body parts? Yeah. So, you know, um, Trudy, I, I, Listen, I know everybody has different religious beliefs, but I'm always open about my belief. And that is that we have a God that created this universe and he loves us. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like I, I believe that really strongly. Yeah. And, and I don't think it's coincidence that there are foods that look like organs. And it goes much deeper than this, by the way, too. There, the certain colors of food tell you which right. organs that they support. The tastes of food tell you which organ systems they support. I'll touch on that at the end, but just let me give you some examples here. Yes, please. A tomato... It, uh, a tomato is one of the greatest foods you could use to heal your heart. A tomato actually looks like your heart, especially if it's an heirloom tomato. Heirloom tomatoes have four chambers. Your heart has four chambers. Heirloom tomatoes are red. Your heart is red. Heirloom tomatoes contain a compound called lycopene, a phytonutrient that is one of the most powerful uh, er, uh, compounds in the world for healing your heart. And so that's a tomato. Carrots, think about this. If you cut open a carrot, it literally looks like an eye, right? Mm -hmm. It has an iris. It has those circles on it. Medical studies have shown that the compounds in carrots, it's called beta carotene, that converts into vitamin A and improves your vision. It's probably one of the top three foods on the planet for supporting eye health. Right. Think about celery. Celery actually looks like your bones. Hold it up to your forearm, you know? Look at, mm -hmm. look at it going from your elbow to your wrist. It contains vitamin K, calcium and electrolytes that actually boost bone health. And it's very alkaline, which means it's going to help support you building strong bones. Um, uh, sweet potatoes look like a pancreas um, and they actually support insulin levels. You've got something like, actually, this is kind of cool. Ginger or a ginseng root looks like the human body. It was known to support the entire human body. Um, you've got something like uh, reishi mushroom. This one's fascinating. Go online and Google search reishi mushroom. It looks identical to your kidneys. And then they have little things on top that look like your adrenal glands. So reishi since the beginning of time was used as a natural adrenal tonic and was known as the, an adaptogen for your adrenals uh, there as well. Um, we could also talk about actually a grapefruit looks like a breast. If you cut it in half, it looks like a breast, even, even some of the dimples on it. And it contains compounds, vitamin C, which support collagen production, which supports breast tissue as does quercetin. Quercetin is a really powerful compound that supports, uh, your breast. And here's the other big one. The peel of grapefruit contains a compound called delimonene which actually helps drain your lymphatic uh, glands, which a lot of times when women have breast health issues, it's a lymphatic issue. Mm -hmm. So it actually helps drain all your lymphatic tissue. So again, I mean, just talk about powerful. Olives look like ovaries. Olives contain unique healthy fats and phytonutrients which support hormonal health. And avocado looks like a uterus. Avocado is high in magnesium, which supports relaxation of the uterus. And it contains high levels of omega-9 fats, which are good for hormonal health for women. Um, you know, so anyway, and there are probably quite a few others there, but all that being said, there are so many foods. Here's the other thing with like supports. Like if you eat an animal tissue, it supports that tissue of your body. Think about this. If you want to put on muscle, what do people want to eat? Protein, right. Pro protein from what muscle meat, a chicken breast, a steak, mm. you know, uh, a fish filet, 
those are all the muscle of the animal versus bone broth is the nutrients from the ligaments and tendons of the animal. So that's going to support your ligaments and tendons or the skin of the animal. That's going to support your skin and your gut health. And so it's like support slight. So eating liver actually supports your own liver because of all the nutrients it has. Here's the other last few things I wanted to mention here with this. Mm, yes. If foods are a certain color, they support a certain organ system. Foods that are dark blue and purple, like blueberries, um, black rice, uh, even some of the dark green foods like spirulina, there's really dark colored foods. Those support your adrenals and reproductive organs. Okay. Right. Um, foods that are green support your liver. Okay. So, um, sprouts and spinach and kale, they all support detoxification, cleansing of the liver foods that are light yellow or white support your immune system. So your lungs and colon. So think about mm -hmm. like, anytime you're sick with a cold or flu, what is the prescription as food is medicine, chicken bone broth soup, <laughs> right? And then right, gin right. ginger tea or ginger ale. Now yes. my mom gave me ginger ale. It's way too much sugar, not good for anybody, <laughs> but that was the, that's the ancient Chinese remedy is chicken broth in ginger tea, if you have a mm -hmm. colder flu, both those foods are light yellow. So is garlic. So are onions. So is miso. These are all the biggest immune boosters out there. So those are good for those. Um, if we're talking about your heart health foods that are red, think about beets. I mentioned those earlier. They're the color of your blood. Beets are the greatest food for your blood on the planet because they boost nitric oxide, which increases circulation throughout your entire body. I didn't, I, I didn't want to forget this one, but I want to mention these two as well. Walnuts. Mm -hmm. Walnuts are the epitome of God saying, eat this for your brain. <laughs> right. Walnuts, it's a whole walnut, literally looks like your head. You crack it open, there's two sides to it, and they look like the left and right hemisphere of your brain. Right. Walnuts are high in vitamin E, which is good for your brain, omega 3 fats, good for your brain, and choline, which is probably the number one vitamin for your brain. All of those are good for brain health. And again, brown foods, good for your heart and your brain. Actually, coconuts look like a head, right? They've mm -hmm, got good mm -hmm. fat for your brain. So anyways, and then the last one here is foods that are orange. Foods that are orange are good for your digestive system. Um, pumpkin, butternut squash, carrots, sweet potatoes, really good for your upper digestive system. And then, and then foods, the flavors, sour supports detoxification, sweet supports upper digestion, salty supports electrolytes in your kidneys, that kidney hormonal system. Um, and then bitter supports your immune system. And then uh, umami, I'm sorry, umami supports your immune system, bitter, your cardiovascular system. I know I just said a lot, but yeah. it's amazing. I mean, you know what, we know right what to eat based on nature, the flavor, the, the color, and then what it looks like. Right, right. Oh my God, that is so fascinating. And I had heard of the walnut one before, but all the other ones you mentioned in the book, I had not heard of those before. And when, as I'm looking at celery, I'm like, oh my God, it does. And the oh, carrot, yeah. I'm like, oh my God, if we cut into it, it looks like an eye. It almost made me want to run to my kitchen and cut one open. <laughs> there you go. And one of the cool things too, in the book, we have all of these charts. So I mentioned the medication right. earlier. I go through the exact medication, the site, the nutrient it pulls. We have this, this chart that goes through even more than I went through a lot more that goes through here's the food here's the body part it supports so anyways it's been uh and i you know i i was talking to somebody about this recently i said i wish our kids learned this sort of like learn nutrition in school i was Absolutely. talking to somebody earlier and we we're literally saying i have not used calculus that i learned my senior <laughs> or high school ever that i didn't learn a single thing about real good nutrition in high school and so you know i wish that kids would be able to just see this and learn these principles and they would be obviously healthier for it but right anyways. and that's why people need to pick up your book and read it to their kids <laughs> yeah, yeah they'd love it you know we've uh, chelsea and i now have a seven month old seven and a half months and uh you know she's not quite old enough yet but pretty soon we'll be uh we'll be teaching her this stuff Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure she'll be doing her own videos and everything. I can't wait. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you have a quiz in your book that people can take to find their diet type. And this is based on TCM. So traditional Chinese medicines, five element model. So can you walk us through what some of those different diet types are? Yeah. So here's the thing to know. I think this is so important. There is not one diet for everybody. You know, because I, I'd, I'd ask if you're listening to this, have you ever had a friend who did a diet or even a family member and it worked great for them and it did not work for you? Right. That happens because Absolutely. there's not one perfect diet for everybody. And I'll say this, if I have somebody with liver disease, 
I have them eat raw foods like raw vegetable juice and salads. But if that person has inflammatory bowel disease, a salad is one of the worst things they can eat, actually, because mm -hmm. it's so hard to digest those raw vegetables. So it really just depends on the person. So this is about over 3,000 years old, and, and it's called the traditional Chinese medicine elements. And it was the first personality profile that also allowed you to know what foods were best for you. So if you've ever taken an Enneagram quiz or a disc profile or Myers-Briggs or any of those personality profiles, they'll say, Hey, this is how you're wired. You know, you're supportive or you're are driven or you're whatever. They'll, they'll... So this does that. It puts people in five different categories and it, it correlates with the five flavors I shared. It correlates with the five color groups of all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So you can take a quiz and find out. And, and here's how to, so I can tell by looking at most people what element they are because different facial features or body types will tell you the element. So for instance, if somebody like myself, I, I'm a longer body type, I'm very lean and lanky. I'm called a wood element in Chinese medicine, which means like, you'll even notice my veins. I kind of look like the, a tree. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's um, just, you know, so, so in, in my face is longer than other people. So that sort of thing. I have really long fingers. It's like a tree. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so I, you can tell based on looking at some people, somebody that's a, um, like my wife, Chelsea, her features are, she's got bigger, like, this is just small stuff, bigger earlobes, a little bigger forehead, really, um, beautiful eyes. Like her voice is more melodic, mm -hmm. um, where mine is more monotone. You can tell different things based on, Hey, this is how you're wired. All that being said, you could take a quiz to find out which element you are. And there are five element types also is based on what emotions you experience because that's mm -hmm. the organ system you're going to have the most health problems with. For instance, I mentioned this earlier, but if somebody, um, I'm going to go through all these different, I'm going to go through the five types right now. Yes. If somebody has a lot of worry, I mentioned it upsets their stomach. So right. when you come into conflict, how do you respond? Some people respond with worry. They worry about things. So that's going to affect their upper digestive system and their pancreas. So they're going to be more susceptible to uh, candida. They're going to be more susceptible to acid reflux, more susceptible to diabetes and blood sugar issues, maybe even PCOS because PCOS is type three. It's a, actually in, that insulin issue causes a lot of those issues. Um, so worry, we know we call that person an earth element, which means they're worried. Those tend to be that tend to be the people that are more motherly and nurturing and joyful. They have more round features. They can gain weight easier than some other people. Um, that's what an earth element is. Um, and, and so their foods, they should be eating a lot of pumpkin and butternut squash and like those fall foods, turkey, chicken, grass fed beef, like those are great for them. Um, and then for the next element would be a metal element and metal elements look more just chiseled. Okay. Some of their, and they have more square features. They tend to be very strong people and they see the world in black and white. We ever meet anybody like that, right? It's like, there's right mm -hmm. and there's wrong and there's no metal. And this is, this is the way the world works. Right. Those people also tend to be very structured and need structure in their life. They also tend to, oftentimes they're good. Some, not always, but sometimes they're good with math or appreciate good math or accounting or numbers, that sort of thing. So those are metal elements. Those people emotionally, when they come into conflict, tend to sometimes deal with it with in grief if it doesn't go their way over time. At first, they might battle and then they'll give up. It's kind of like I'm going all or nothing, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what that personality profile is. But they're big, they're most susceptible to this. They're most susceptible to having something happen in the past and not letting go of it. Mm -hmm. And maybe living with a sense of loss. Maybe they went through a divorce or lost a loved one, or maybe there's a job they really wanted and they didn't get it or they thought their life was going to turn out a certain way and it never did. And they're still holding on to that thing that completely shuts down the immune system, the lungs and colon. And so that can cause autoimmune disease. That's how, that's how it will manifest itself over time. Immune deficiencies, all, all those sorts of things is how they'll present themselves. And so anyways, that's metal element now. And so there are certain foods that help that though. It's foods that are light yellow. It's bone broth. It's, miso soup, it's garlic, it's ginger. It's all those things we shared earlier. Okay. And there's good things about all these people too. Earth elements are like, man, they're the people you're like, man, I just like hanging out with this person. They're encouraging, they're loving. They're like, if you, they were a dog, I don't mean this to be offensive, but if they were a dog, they'd be a golden retriever. If we have mm -hmm. friends like that, that's how they are. Metal element is that person. Again, they're black, they're white, they're structured, they're, you know, 
they're wired that way. But without them, the world would fall apart because we need structured, organized people right. to keep things in order, you know, and keep things efficiently moving and going smoothly, creating systems in our life, those sort of things, right? Mm -hmm. And those people also tend to be um, all for, they really want to fight for justice. Like that's just within them. They want to fight for justice in this world. That's one of the positive characteristics of that metal element. And then we've got the water element. Water elements are deep. They're philosophers. They, they like reading and having deep conversations. That's what fills them up and nourishes them. Now, negatively, they deal with the emotion of fear, fear of disappointing others, fear of failure, that sort of thing. So they operate, they can operate out of fear, not fear in the sense of always of like this fight or flight response, like I'm afraid for my life, more of like, I don't want to let somebody down, mm -hmm. you know, that sort of emotion. It's a form of fear. And that will deplete the adrenal glands. It'll pu pull the adrenals. That, that's actually a root cause of infertility in a lot of women if they can't conceive at all. Actually carrying a child through the entire term, that's earth element. And that's a pancreas insulin issue with, with that over there. But again, actually conceiving, that's water element. And so those people, and I love, again, my wife is wired like this. She is very deep, like, like, like you know, having deep conversations, reading deep books. I'm like, babe, what are you reading? And she's like, I'm reading a book on, quantum physics or something <laughs> I'm like, all right, awesome. Cool. And so, or something real deep spirit, you know, book on spirituality. So like, that's what my, my wife will do, but that's a water element. And they're also very go with the flow. Think about actually think about Jamaica, the J different countries are related to different elements as well. So you're going to have more people that tend to be water elements in Jamaica. And because they're like, Hey, it doesn't matter what time it is. Hey, let's just right. go with the flow. Hey, met, we're at metal elements, which is cultures like Germany and Japan mm -hmm. are metal. They're like, no, it should be this way. Show up on time, very structured. <laughs> where again, the islands are like, hey, you know, and, and what are they surrounded with? The islands, water. water. It's a water element, right? And so, but, but you got to be aware because those people though are most susceptible to Hey, I don't want to let this person down, fear those emotions. So we got to support those adrenal glands. Then we have the wood element, which is myself. I'm most susceptible to impatience, frustration. If I got really out of balance, it would be anger. But for myself, like things aren't moving fast enough. Like wood elements want to grow. Think about a tree. It wants to grow. If you're mm. keeping it in the shade or keeping it in a small pot, like it wants to grow. And so the positive of wood elements is they tend to be really great uh, leaders and they tend to have a lot of vision. Hey, here's a plan and, you know, and dreaming and future, like that sort of thing. But if out of bounds, it's in, very impatient and frustrated with the situation at hand that causes issues with the liver and gallbladder. So it detoxifies your liver, stops smowing, flowing smoothly. Your body doesn't detoxify properly with that emotion. And then you have the fire element. So, so fire element as a nation, think about a very fiery and passionate, uh, you know, um, like, like culture, like Hispanic culture or Italian culture, like a very passionate, fiery, like, you know, mm. um, that's according, according to Chinese medicine, those are the cultures they're most, um, that more people in that culture tend to be in terms of individuals. And so those people are more heart. They're feelers. I mean, they let their feelings guide them, you know, and so there's a, in the passion. That's that, that positive thing. They're the people that are passionate, but they're also loving. They're magnetic. Like they draw community to like, they love community. They'll, uh, the fire and the earth, those tend to be really extroverted people, but they're most susceptible to things like high blood pressure. Think about it. You get real passionate and worked up, your blood pressure can raise heart conditions, that sort of thing. And so all that being said, there are, is a specific diet for each one of those people to make sure you're supporting that organ system. So like, I'll give you an example. The keto diet is good for some people that are fire elements and some people that are earth on occasion metal, but wood elements in water will not do well on a keto diet. They will do terrible. And so all that being said, it's just really, so I have a quiz in the book to tell you exactly what type you are. So you know what diet. eat. By the way, this works out. It's hundred percent effective. Like we, this has been done for over 3000 years in ancient, like Japan, where the people are living to be over hundred years old. You know, they're, they're eating, people eat based on their type. Cause again, there's not one diet for everybody. So when you eat a diet that is perfectly designed for you, people just start to see really good results in their, in their body. Mm. Oh my God, Dr. Axe, that was so good. And you have like this amazing ability to take a complex sort of, you know, thought or idea and just really break it down. And you did such a great job there. That was so phenomenal. Again, 
listeners, pick up this book. It's incredible. I'm, I'm sure you're starting to see that. <laughs> so Dr. Rex, this is a hot topic these days, and I'm so glad that you covered it in your book. Um, in the book, you talk about cannabis, and I think the chapter is called Cannabis, the Forbidden Herb. So can yep. you share with us exactly what CBD is and the health benefits that it offers? Yeah, let me start with cannabis, and then we'll move into the compound like CBD. So here's the thing right. to know. I'm going to say this from the start. I am not a proponent of, of again, as a doctor, I do not think cannabis is good for most people, but it is good. And, and I'm talking about with THC, it is good as a replacement for a pain medication. If somebody's going through chemotherapy, if, if we're looking for a, a replacement for an opioid drug, if somebody just got out of a serious surgery and is in serious pain and they would have to take a different type of prescription medication, I think that's when it should be used and what it should be used for. Outside of that, I don't think people should be taking it for most other conditions. Here's why. Cannabis, if you're taking just traditional, what they're calling marijuana, high THC plant, it actually starts to drain your adrenals, okay? Hmm. And, so, and think about this. If somebody overuses cannabis over time, we all know that it sucks their motivation. What does motivation come from? It's that adrenals, it's you're, you're tired, you're lethargic, you're just, you're, you're, you've lost your motivation. So it drains that part of your body if you overdo it. Now, one time, probably not, but it pulls a little bit every time, okay? Now, enough to where, hey, you can get it back. It's like, hey, if you lose a couple hours of sleep, yeah, your body can replenish. But if somebody overdoes it and does it consistently recreationally, it absolutely has serious, it damages their body in a major way. So I wanted to start off giving that warning. Now, here's the good thing is that today we are growing types of the cannabis plant that is high in CBD or is almost primarily CBD um, and CBD. Okay. So THC is going to have, um, you know, effects on the body that is going to cause you to it's, it's hallucinogenic, you know, hallucinogenic effects. Okay. So it's going to cause you to have a form of hallucination, um, but also dampens nerve pain. CBD actually works with your nervous system in the way that it actually acts on your parasympathetic nerve system to tonify it or strengthen it, which is going to decrease your sympathetic. So a sympathetic nerve response is your body's in a fight or flight state, right? right. A bear is chasing you. A lion is chasing you. You got to either fight the thing or fly from it. What your body does in that situation is it sends all your blood and energy to your brain for alertness and your extremities, like your arms and legs, so you can run or fight. Mm -hmm. That's what your body has been created to do when your body gets in a fight or flight state. What that means though, is all those nutrients and blood and energy leave your inside. What's on the middle of your body. It's your organ systems. This is why you could not, if, if Trudy, if you and I went outside right now and said, Hey, I'm going to go run a 10 K run, you know, six, 6 6.2 miles. We could not eat a cheeseburger in the middle of it. We would throw the thing up, right? <laughs> yeah, you ever tried right. to eat a cheeseburger or something like that in your middle of exercising? You can't, you will throw it up. Why? All of your energy is in your extremities. None of it is in your digestive system. None of it is. So your body is always on a teeter totter, has a balancing effect of these two types of nervous re system responses. Parasympathetic is when your body gets really, you get, you're having a massage. Your body's really relaxed. Your body then starts secreting uh, digestive juices to digest foods. It starts secreting certain hormones for relaxation. Your body gets in a regenerative state. Your body starts healing during that time. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what happens. That's why, that's what CBD is good at. CBD, the reason I like CBD so much for certain conditions, it is probably the most powerful herb or one of for moving your body from that sympathetic state that so many of us live in of, of blue light and traffic jams and emotional stress. And it puts us in a parasympathetic state to where now we can relax. We can digest better. Our body starts to regenerate and heal better. So again, I am a big fan of using CBD as a form of medicine for a lot of people. I do think there's a place for medicinal cannabis for especially those issues that are related to chronic pain as a replacement for opioids and other things. But that's my view. The, the, one of the unique things I cover in my book is, uh, you know, hemp or cannabis was first used or referenced as a medicine in a Chinese medicine textbook, um, like thousands of years ago. So it's been used for medicine as part of the, you know, encyclopedia of medicine, along with turmeric and ashwagandha and all these other herbs for a long time. But, you know, it needs to be used in the right way, in a responsible way, especially when we're talking about cannabis. When we're talking about CBD, I think 
common sense and a lot of people will know how to use it based on it's a natural way to move yourself into a pair of sympathetic state and reduce stress. Mm, so good. Thank you so much for explaining that. That was amazing. Now, I want to talk about what we're currently facing right now, and that's the pandemic. And it's caused so much stress and so much uncertainty. So what's your biggest message for people during the pandemic? A few things. One, have faith over fear, right? Mm. Here's the thing I would just say to all doctors out there and anyone, and listen, to a degree, you're a doctor for your own body and your family, okay? All of us do, do, do you know, take care of other people. Um, but here's the thing. Fear of all emotions is probably the most damaging emotion. Mm -hmm. It's the most damaging because it puts your body in that sympathetic state. And that area is actually what supplies energy to all the organ systems that we're talking about. So fear is probably the most damaging of all emotions. It's kind of interesting in the Bible, they say perfect love cuts out fear. So they call love the opposite of fear. Mm -hmm. So when love, you're in a present state, of not thinking about yourself, but you're looking at adding value to others, helping others fulfill their homes and dreams, that puts you in a good emotional state. It gets you out of fear. So that, that's the first thing is you've got to the, get yourself in a good emotional state. I start out, out, off every morning doing a spiritual triathlon where I spend time getting grateful. So I do an I have a, grat a gratitude practice. I did this this morning, do it every morning. I say, God, I'm so thankful for you and my relationship with you. You know, I'm, you know, and I just praise him. And then I say, I'm so thankful for my beautiful, um, awesome, loving wife who, you know, pushes me to grow and who is just so caring and loving. I'm so thankful for my daughter, Arwen. What a beautiful gift and a joy she is to my life. I'm so thankful that I have a job where I get to do what I love. So I start off getting grateful. And then I spend time reading something like my Bible or a personal growth book or a spiritual growth book. I spend time feeding myself something good. And then I spend the next five minutes meditating on it and not the meditation where I'm thinking of nothing. It's real med It's the meditation that's talked about in uh, Judeo-Christianity, which is you take a concept like love and you chew on it and you think about how to apply it to your life. And so I'll read mm -hmm. something like Corinthians 13 and say, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud proud it does not dishonor others. So I will think on that and I'll say, okay, have I been patient lately? Have I been kind? Who, who was I not kind to? Who do I need to be more kind to? And I'll chew on that and think about what is kindness? What would that look like for me to be more kind? How can I do that today? And I know that probably wasn't, wasn't what everyone was expecting, expecting me to say, but if you want to, you know, the best thing to do is build yourself up emotionally. I think diet is like 50% or less I think that your emotional state is just as important as what you're putting in your body dietarily. So all that being said, number one, start off every morning doing that spiritual triathlon I'm talking about. And if you do that, I'm telling you, man, what that does for your day and for your life is so big. Next thing, use food as medicine to just, just to support your health. We all know there are plenty of medical studies showing that certain foods, certain herbs, certain nutrients can support your immune health right? A lot of people that get health issues have an immunodeficiency. So how do you overcome immunodeficiencies? You start to support your immune system. Right. What's the best way to do that? Let me give you some foods, some herbs and nutrients to support your immune system. Food wise, consume a lot of vegetables, cooked vegetables, specifically foods that are green, yellow, and orange. So green foods like kale and broccoli, orange foods like pumpkin and butternut squash, and carrots, yellow foods like chicken broth and ginger. Okay. Get more of those types of foods from a herb standpoint. The most powerful herbs for your immune system for most people are going to be elderberry, echinacea, and astragalus. So elderberry, echinacea, astragalus, the top nutrients we need to be getting probably in this order, zinc, vitamin D, vitamin C. Okay. So, so I would say too many people today, Trudy, I see them do this. They're worried. They're watching the news. They're on social media. They're putting yes. themselves in a state of fear. Yes. Get off social media. Stop watching the news. Start watching a news channel that's not so biased. I mean, at first off, why are all news stations now so far left or so far right? Can I just get something like, anyways, I don't, yeah. I'm not going to get into the whole thing here. I, I hear you. I'm not I agree get with political. you. I'm just going to say, <laughs> like, just tell me, nobody's telling the truth anymore. That's mm -hmm. the hard thing. Mm -hmm. you know? So that's why I go to the Bible. That's why I follow people on places like YouTube now and get more stuff there. Like, I'm focusing on, things that are truth, focusing on things that are positive. So many people today have got in this state of fear. And then also we're missing out on community. You know, community, 
people aren't thinking about the side effects of not being around each other. When you hug somebody, a hormone called oxytocin is released. It's the same when a, when a mother is breastfeeding their child, it creates connection. So hugging somebody, shaking their hand, loving somebody like that being, and actually your body starts releasing hormones that strengthens your immune system, balance your hormones, heals yourself, heals this your is, body. This is what I tell my husband, Dr. Axe. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully so, now he believes me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. I think, I think important things to consider. So I think again, Hey, change your diet, you know, work on your mindset. And I think, uh, good things will come of it. Yeah. And I love that. I love that you call it a spiritual triathlon. That is such a great name for it. And I think, you know, you and I both have similar morning rituals because mine definitely starts with the Bible. I have the Bible on my phone. I have the app, but I also have um, notifications. So throughout the day, it will actually send me Bible verses throughout the day. So, you know, it just pings and it just comes in. And sometimes I just need that motivation. And I love when that comes in. Um, And then exercise is another one I do as well. I help it. It really helps me mentally with the exercising. What I did recently on my Instagram account is I went and unfollowed, and, and part of it was it's connected to my business account. But I went and unfollowed a lot of people I thought that aren't that aren't adding value, and so I, I pretty much follow um, accounts that are you know Bible verses and personal growth and leadership. That's all I follow now. And healthy recipes, you know, and in, in, in the in the nutrition and health people I like, but all the like celebrity stuff that are putting out all this stuff, I don't follow them anymore because. If it's putting me in a state of fear, I don't follow it. Right, right. And you know, that's such a great tip too, because that actually helps you to control your algorithm on Instagram. I won't get too deep into the weeds on that, but if you're picking and choosing, you know, who you're following and what you're liking, that's what's going to be cultivated on your feed as well. Right. hundred percent. Yeah. So amazing. So I have a question that I usually ask all of my guests. And the question is, what's your favorite way to take care of your mind and your body? I think you already answered that, but if you have anything else to add, I would love to hear it. I would say this, you know, I, I have a, I had a mentor who said this and he's not the first one. Many other people said it, but it's win the morning, win the day. Mm-hmm. And so I do start off every morning doing that spiritual triathlon. The next thing I do is I go and have a good breakfast. I do a superfood smoothie. It's like uh, a cup of berries, a cup of coconut milk and some collagen protein. That's what I do for breakfast. And, um, and then I try to exercise. Like I, I, I wake up at like, you know, 6 a.m. or so. And then I get all that done by 8 a.m. And like, I'm ready to take on the day. So I just, I think if you can start off your morning with a spiritual triathlon, with a good breakfast and a good workout, you're setting yourself up to win. Here's the other thing I would say. You become like those you surround yourself with and those you expose yourself to. This is why what you mentioned earlier is such a big deal. I'm very intentional. My wife and I, Chelsea, are very intentional about who we spend time with. Now, there are certain times where we see it as ministry and loving other people. But most of the time, when we're saying, who is our crew? Who are we hanging out with? You know, I, I'm making sure it's certain types of people. So if you have someone in your life who is discouraging you, you're trying to do things in your life and you're trying to grow, and they just keep discouraging you, talking down to you, keeping you from being who God has designed you to be, you know, you know, maybe spend time with less of those people and then write down who are the people that are encouraging you, people that are positive influences that, you know, you need to change your way of thinking and think more like them, write down those people, spend more time with them. I think that's such a big thing too. And that goes with even who you're exposing yourself to on social media. So anyways, Trudy, I do think though that spiritual triathlon, if there's one thing that's, that, that's where I would go. Amazing. So Dr. Axe, if someone is interested in learning more about you and the work that you do in the world, where can people find you? Yeah. So you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Dr. Josh Axe. Also on YouTube, I have a website, draxe.com. And you can look up anything on there. If you want to know the benefits of turmeric or ashwagandha, or if you have, you know, fertility issues, just look up, just go on your search engine, search Dr. Axe fertility. I've written in-depth articles on all of these things on how to use food as medicine. Also my new book, Ancient Remedies. I think you guys are going to love it again. And also I have shopping list in there. I have meal plans for what to eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, over 80 recipes. It's also a reference guide. So no matter what condition you have, uh, you know, if it's an autoimmune disease or another health problem, I go through the top five herbs, supplements, things to heal it. So it's a reference guide. So you can find ancient remedies there on amazon.com as well. Um, But those are some, some of the places. 
Perfect. And I'll make sure to link to all of that in the show notes so you guys can follow Dr. X. So Dr. X, thank you so much for joining us on the Mind Your Body show today. It was an absolute pleasure having you here. Congrats again on the new book, Ancient Remedies. Again, I know this book is going to change the game and help so many people. So get ready for all of those amazing reviews. <laughs> awesome, Trudy. Well, hey, thanks so much. It was an honor to be on. And uh Again, hey, uh, yeah, you know, I, I, I love you. You're, you're such a good interviewer. It's so easy, so uh, just fun to be on. So again, I appreciate uh, you having me on. Oh, thank you so much, Dr. X. I appreciate that.